Okay, um, uh, that, first of all, the transition's been really good. Um, really credit to, to the Holiday Bowl and, and just, you know, being very well organized for us uh, getting into the hotel. Uh, obviously, the practice site, you know, real thankful to San Diego State uh, for opening up uh, their doors to us and just a really good transition. That's always one of the concerns when you get to a bowl game is just transitioning the players. Uh, I think the guys understand it, um, came out focused and just kind of practice the way we would if we were at home so that that part was really good um, this is all the the delicate piece of having really good meetings really good practice and then transitioning into some of the fun and so the guys get to go to the zoo today um, you know, experience that be part of that experience a little bit of San Diego um, what an awesome time I and mean, it's you know Christmas Eve 75 degrees so uh, we're, we're really fortunate uh, it seems like Uchenna's been back in the swing of things yeah. is he good to go I would think so. You know, I'm gonna go look at the film, Mike, and, and try to get a, a real sense of, of you know isolating him and looking at him. But but he looked good today running, and we'll see how he responds tomorrow as well. Sure. And what about a Jenny? Uh, I would think he's a little further away. He just hasn't responded. And again, hamstrings. You know, when you get them, they can they can take you know they can be time consuming to to bounce back from. So I would say that he's doubtful at this point. Coach, what are the biggest challenges for? Nebraska's offenses in the Well, I think one, the, the the multitude of runs that they have on offense is a challenge. They've got design quarterback runs, they've got the zone read stuff, they've got fly sweep, they have the traditional runs with the mirror, all of that stuff, and then they have all the play action pass shot stuff down the field to, to Kenny Bell and those guys. So uh, that, that part makes them really challenging offensively. They've got a lot of offense. Defensively, they are extremely well coached and to the point of they match your routes really well. They can make completions difficult to get. Couple that with they're excellent up front. And so they, they don't allow you to kind of hold the ball and pat the ball. They get to the quarterback really well very quickly. So um, the, the challenge for us is to remain balanced, which has always been a, been a um, kind of a focus or goal of ours going into every game. We've leaned the last month or so uh, more on the passing game we've been a little bit more committed to it and it's been it's been good to us um, but against this team I think that you know it's, we can't just be a one-dimensional football team you have to make them defend both um, because they're, they're very good if they, if they, if they make you one-dimensional it can get hard on us Cody was talking yesterday about how the break between the end of the regular season and this game kind of allowed guys to get healthy allowed him mm -hmm. to get treatment what's it done for uh, Javorius Allen I mean does he look uh, a little bit Stronger or revitalized? Uh, I think he looks great. You know, I think I think Buck looks really good. You know, he um, I, I said, you know sometimes Buck's numbers have come down a little bit um, over the last month. But again, that's we've been throwing the ball more too, and um, you, know, you try to do what's best for your team to go out and win games. And, and Buck's been great. You know, he's continually catching the ball out of the back for force. He's running it well. We're going to need Buck to play well Saturday night, as I, as I touched on. We're going to need his versatility in his game, running it, catching it, um, for us to be as successful as we want to be. And But he looks good so far. Do you? I know you talked with the draft-eligible guys mm -hmm. a few weeks ago to be like an advisor, but right. this could be the last game for some of those guys. Sure. Do you address them individually at all about yeah. how to handle this? Yeah. Or, yeah, I'll, and what I'll, would you what would you say to them? Well, I'd, I'd, embrace this, enjoy this opportunity, and play this game. And you, you can't get caught up in what's down the road. And I think they've all done a really good job of that. Even at practice, I mean, you wouldn't, you know, whether Leonard or Buck or Cody or Nelson, these guys, they're all practicing like crazy. And that, that's that's awesome, you know, that they can, they can compartmentalize that in the sense of that right now it's about this game. And it's mm -hmm. about putting their best foot forward and being with their teammates enjoying this experience, playing a great game Saturday night, and then, okay, now we can move on to the next step. And um, you know, the, the initial meeting I have with them was, let's make sure we understand timing-wise what's going on. We don't have to make a decision until January 15th. Mm -hmm. We're playing December 27th, so we have plenty of time, almost three weeks there, to make a really educated decision. Let's focus on the game right now. How different is the meeting with Leonard versus other guys when he's so highly sure. projected? Sure, uh, it's, it's different. I think they're all different. You know, Scott, they, they all got different factors um, to to making a, a really clear, educated decision. Um, Leonard's is obviously different than, than some of the other guys, but but that's okay. Uh, the easy thing is to say, hey, I'm leaving. I, you know, the, the, the pundits say, hey, I'm going to be a top five pick. I'm leaving. Leonard loves USC, and Leonard loves his teammates. He loves being a part of a team. He, he, loves the future of this program and where we're headed. Uh, I don't think it's as cut and dry and as easy for him as maybe people would assume. Um, 
but that's why you go through it. And and you, you, you point out all the factors, you talk about insurance, you talk about all the different things, you talk about earning a degree, um, you also, you know, you, you talk about the draft, you talk about needs and who's get drafting where. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it um, so that whatever he decides to do, he feels great about what he's doing. Do you insurance, has, has USC made any of those commitments, like some schools have to, sure. you know, go up with sixty or $75,000? Yes, yeah, when we're, obviously Pat has been um, really supportive of that, um, and everything that we do, and I've been saying this all along, whether it's insurance, meals, um, educating our players, whatever we do, everything we do is in the best interest of our student athletes. And I think that's a real credit to USC and their willingness to support uh, our, our student athletes on every front. And this is just another example of that. There was a, an incident uh, a few bowl games ago yeah. with BYU. It's my alma mater. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't very proud of them. <laughs> Did you uh, address that with your team or do you? Uh, I address how we conduct ourselves every day, whether we're at home or at a bowl game. Obviously, you go to a bowl game, there's more interaction with, with the opposing team, with Nebraska. I've got a great deal of respect for their program and everybody is part of the program. I've had a chance to, to play them actually in the Holiday Bowl. So uh, it's just about being humble. It's about being respectful and, and respecting the Holiday Bowl and all that they've provided us and then respecting the game when it's time to play the game. Um, Football is an emotional sport, and it, it only takes one guy sometimes spark to, to light up to get others involved. So uh, it's unfortunate when things like that occur, I, you know, but we obviously don't condone it. Coach, what makes uh, Leonard so good in your mind? Oh, he loves football. I mean, that guy loves football, and I know a lot of people love football. You, you couple with his love for the game with height, weight, speed, uh, uh, high football IQ. Um, he's just got a lot of those characteristics and traits but I've said all along and our, our local guys know I mean there's been times where that guy didn't have to play where maybe other people in his position might not have played um, he had a poor ankle early in the year he's had a shoulder that he's dealt with um, but he comes to work every day he practices his tail off and, and he plays his tail off every snap and um, it's, a, it's a very unique quality for such a high profile player. You get the vibe that you, your guys really want to be here and that's not always the case with the bowl game in your experience, how much does that matter? That you know that they're interested and excited about playing. I think it's, I man, it's great. It's another opportunity to play football. You know, we we work really hard as coaches, as players. These guys work really, really hard, and the reward is they get to play another game. I mean, what what a what an awesome opportunity to go out and play another game against a quality opponent in an unbelievable city. I mean, we're we're, we're lucky, you know, and I think our guys understand that, and they're trying to make the most of it. Do one more. Are you going to go to the zoo? I'm going to try. <laughs>